Shalom, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahaha Kudash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone, pushing this doctrine of truth to the elect of the nation of Israel, who were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, <clears throat> pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right, I wanted to uh, land back on uh, actually a couple videos that I saw from some brothers, beloved uh, Elder Manata Zakba, beloved Elder Amawan Abad, <clears throat> regarding this uh, this CBDC's uh, thing that's going to be implanted. I'm trying to choose my words wisely because I don't want them marking the video, so. <clears throat> anyway, what you see here is what we've been warning the flock about for quite some time now. Okay, some of us more than others, of course, the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone have been uh, screaming from the mountaintops a warning uh, for the past 30 plus years. Okay, since I came into the truth in 2018, obviously I've been doing the same. But what you see is them laying the foundation for the Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, also known as the mark of the beast. Okay, so you see a small little chip here that is going to be implanted under the skin in order for one to buy and sell. Just what the title says or implies. WEF, World Economic Forum, says CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, must be implanted under your skin if you want to participate in society. So we are almost at that time. And for those of us of the hopeful elect that have been in this truth, this is what we're praying for, okay? Because once this happens, we know our salvation is even closer, and we know that at some point it's going to be mandated. And uh, if you still refuse to play ball with the beast, then you could be executed. And that's pursuant to the book of Revelation. Uh, I want to say chapter 2, verse 10, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, let's read a little bit of the article, then we'll uh, get a couple scriptures and that's it. So the World Economic Forum, uh, Forum has declared that all citizens, all citizens must be implanted with a central bank digital currency microchip in the very near future in order to, able, in order to be able to fully participate in society and do basic things such as purchase food and water can't get any more basic than that. I mean, these are basic needs that are vital to your survival. So they're telling you, if you don't play ball with this, you can't get this. See, and this is one of those many dr draconian measures that they're going to implement to bring you under their control. Esau Edom, the Edomites. According to Professor Richard Werner, in the very near future, citizens will need to use the latest technology, such as the CBDC chip implant, in order to access their bank accounts. Man, this is heavy. Professor Richard A. Werner is an economist and professor of, bank, uh, professor of banking and finance. He is known as the proponent of a new post-crisis monetary policy he called quantitative easing, also known as QE, which he proposed in Japan in 1995 as chief economist of a British investment bank. He has also worked as a researcher as a university or at the University of Oxford, the Bank of Japan, the Development Bank of Japan, and the Asian Development Bank. He is involved in supporting the establishment of not-for-profit not community banks through an initiative called Local First CIC. Okay, so there you have it. And I'm going to scroll down to uh, another part of the article that I find pretty um, 
It's not surprising because this is the devil that you're dealing with, the Edomites, and these people are wicked to the core. Uh, what was it? Where was it? We'll start here. The true reason I think they want this inflation because that is to cover up, essentially, the disintegration of the petrodollar and move to the new system, which they can which they want to be the CBDC based. At the moment, there's talk about CBDCs being used via phone based apps. Yes, that is the initial phase. But what was already ready around 2015 is the ultimate goal. What they really want, apparently, I was told by a central banker, is CBDC looks like a small grain of rice that they want to put under your skin, which is my, which is in Salakia, which is my view of violation of human dignity. And they realize there is a hurdle to get people to accept this, Professor Werner said. So they're using crises, disruption, and unemployment to introduce universal basic income to soften the public up to accepting a CBDC chip implanted under the skin. So if they create a crisis, you're more likely to go along with it. You're going to oblige out of desperation. Okay? If they're talking about creating universal basic income, that's because you're not going to be able to work. You're not going to be able to provide the means to support yourself or your family. Okay? So there has to be something catastrophic to the point where people are not going to be able to work. Okay, now think about 2020, what they did, what they implemented when they forced up, uh, forced us to roll up your sleeve and if you didn't play ball, you were fired from your job, remember? So that's a, that's a good example. And I suspect they're gonna have another one rolled out sometime in 2024 in order to get this started or some type of an EMP some type of a blackout that's going to last for weeks and weeks and weeks. Okay, something that has to paralyze the nation and its citizens so you can't provide for your own basic needs. You can't work. The government's going to have to step in and say, hey, look, we got, we got a, a solution here for the issue, for your problems. You need to be able to pay your rent, your mortgage. You need to be able to buy food. So take this CBDC, but the catch is, in order to use it, you're going to have to put it under your skin. Okay, hence our first scripture. Let's go to the book of Revelation. See, you Israelite camps that are teaching the exact opposite, that the mark of the beast is sin, boy, you're going to be destroyed because you are lying through your teeth. Now, now is a good time to say, you know, admit that you were wrong. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Salakia, jump down to 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Right? And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the na number of his name. Okay, so no man, woman, or child will be able to buy, like you read in the article, it said food or water. Okay, you're not going to be able to participate in the economy. Right? As far as buying or selling. Going to your doctor to get medical checkups, to get medicine, okay, unless you have that mark. This is not just going to be limited to the economy as far as buying and selling, all right? This is going to be, this is going to um, reach every aspect of society for the most part, okay? Like I said, you won't be able to go into a hospital. You won't be able to apply for a job. You won't be able to do a damn thing. OK, you won't be able to exist unless you play ball with the devil's devices. OK, one more time. 
and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Now, you Israelite bug out camps like IUIC, One Body of Yahweh Shai, GOCC, ISUPK, all of you demonic camps that are preaching the opposite as far as what the mark of the beast is, because I know IUIC says that it's sin. Now, how in the hell are you going to be able to uh, implant sin under your skin? Okay, that doesn't make sense. Right? How are you going to be able to buy and sell with sin? I mean, it just it doesn't make sense at all. Okay? We commit sin. Now, we don't do it willfully, many of us, those of us in the truth. Okay? We do. We repent. But there's really no way around it because we're not sovereign as a nation. We're still in the land of our captivity. So when we go off, we have to repent. Okay? So... If you take the mark, you're not going to be able to repent. Okay? There is no turning back. If you got it, you're dead. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to take you out. Point blank, period. He even talked about getting a grievous sore if you take the mark. That's not going to happen if you commit sin. I mean, this is obviously a sin, but this is very specific as to what that sin is. Okay? Um, I mean, this is a commandment. Okay, so the Heavenly Father is telling us not to do it. We're not to do it. Okay, uh, I think IUSPK, IUSPK said that the mark was white women, sleeping with white women, some foolishness. And I can't remember what the other camp said, but everybody's saying, well, not everybody, but a, a good number of those camps are saying that the mark is not the chip. When it clearly is. At this point, if you can't, Read that article that I just read and deduce that this is definitely talking about a physical mark. Okay, then you took that back. I mean, it's pretty obvious. And this is why they won't come forward and issue an apology. Okay, or just say, hey, listen, we were wrong. This is definitely what the mark of the beast is. Okay, without a doubt, we were wrong. And it's cool. Hey, man. No worries. You know, no one's perfect. I'm glad you were able to come to your senses through the Spirit and realize that you were wrong and, he, and even admit it. Okay? And then we move on. This is not, you know, the time to sit there gloating and boasting and bragging and trying to make people feel bad. That's not the point. The point is to warn the flock. Okay? Speaking of which, let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, not the entire world. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Well, what kind of warning? In the last days, you tell them, you tell the flock not to take that chip. You tell the flock to repent. Okay, you tell the flock the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And if you don't call on those names, you're going to be destroyed. If you take that chip, you're going to be destroyed. Okay, it's as simple as that. We are watchmen of the house of Israel and we are to issue warnings to our people. Warn them. Let them know. But see... Those other wicked Israelite camps, IUIC, they're not doing that. They're telling their flock it's okay. All right. If they happen to mandate the chip, if they happen to mandate those CBDCs and tell you to take it under your skin, go ahead and take it. It's okay. That's not, that's not a sin. Okay. That's not the mark. So you should be good. These clowns, I guarantee you, they were given a bag by the devil. Esau eat them. And they were told to preach this this part of their doctrine okay that this is in fact not the mark of the beast so you should be good if you take it you need to be able to survive like everybody else well you can't take a leap of faith if you put your trust in the devil the heavenly father wants you 
to show your faith. How much do you believe? Do you believe what's written in the scriptures? Do you believe or do you believe that you're to walk through uh, walk by faith, not by sight? And I'm roughly paraphrasing. OK, because he wants us to rely on him. He wants us to believe in him and know without a doubt that the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is going to provide for us. He's going to provide our food, shelter, and clothing, okay, during this, this, uh, uh, during this mark, okay, and when they, when they mandate it, okay, in order to survive. So the Heavenly Father is going to survive or help us survive, okay? It's that simple. Let's go to the book of uh, Titus. Whose mouth, this is uh, Titus chapter 1 verse 11, whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake, for money, okay? And if you get money this way, it's filthy money, okay? And this money has blood on it, okay? Because you're going to cause your flock, your congregation, and anybody that listens to your videos and believes that you're being honest and forthcoming about what the mark is, they're going to say, well, hey, that one Israelite camp said it was cool. You know, go ahead and take it. There won't be any consequences. But if you do, you are marked for death. I mean, it's as simple as that. One more time. Whose mouths must be stopped. I-U-I-C. G-O-C-C. I-S-U-P-K. One body of Yahweh who subvert whole houses with their lies, with their false doctrines, their false teachings, teaching things, teaching things which they ought not. And they shouldn't be telling people that the mark of the beast is sin. That's not that's not true. For filthy lucre's sake. And they're doing all this to profit. Okay? There's a reason why IS uh, what is it? Not ISUPK. IUIC is worth $150 million. I think that's what they make. I think that's their total worth, if I'm not mistaken, as a congregation. But they're taking that 501c3 uh, tax exemption. So they're getting perks from the government. They don't have to pay taxes. So all the money that they generate for their congregation, guess what? They get to pocket it. Okay? And a lot of it has to do with them telling you that uh, the mark of the beast is sin, right? Let's get one more scripture. We'll wrap it up. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Okay, these words are going to be comforting to the elect. Okay, because we can see the prophecies. We see these prophecies being fulfilled. Okay, and if they're not already fulfilled, they're on a the horizon of being fulfilled. Okay. This mark of the beast is something we're all looking forward to because we know without a doubt that is the end. We're not afraid. Okay? We welcome this. All right? I mean, there may be some fear, a little bit of fear because of not knowing what to expect, you know, in terms of how things are going to play out. But we know as long as we continue putting our trust and our faith and belief in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, He's got us. He's got us. Okay? See, fear is not going to keep me or compel me to say, well, you know what? I got to eat. I got to be able to feed my kids. All right? Um, yeah, I'm going to go have to, I'm going to go ahead and, and acquiesce and just take it and, and pray that the Lord has mercy. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Okay? The Lord is trying to measure your faith. All right? Based on your actions. Okay? And your actions are a function of your beliefs. Okay? So if you believe that he is, if you believe that Yahweh Shai has got you, 
and he's going to protect you through this, then guess what? You're not going to take it. Okay? You're going to take that leap of faith and say, you know what? Man, the Heavenly Father is going to take care of us. Okay? And tell Yahawashai comes, call us up on the chariots, and then establishes the kingdom of heaven. You know, give us some new bodies. Okay? This is what we need to do in order to get there. This is what you have to do. Okay? If your faith isn't as, as strong as you want it to be, you got to pray. Start fasting. Okay? That's the quickest and easiest way. Praying and fasting to get more faith. Ask the Lord, hey, I need more faith. Fortify my strength. Okay? So I can make it through this because, you know, we just need to make it through to the end. That's it. And after that, everlasting life. Brand new bodies. Super bodies. Okay? You won't age anymore. Okay? No more pain. No more sickness. No more cancer. No more heartache. No more crying. Okay? This is all worth it. Everything that we're about to go through in Jacob's trouble is going to be worth it at the end. Keep your eye on the prize. Not just the Israelite man, but the Israelite woman. Okay? So this is just something that we have to go through a short period of time and uh, make it through until the end. And then it's smooth sailing from there. All right? All right, I'm going to wrap it up. I hope this was edifying. All praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.